Lift up your hands. Let's lift our hands to Jesus. To God, let's thank God for all the things that He has done. Let's give Him praise for all that He has done. Let's magnify His name for all that He has done. In the name of Jesus, let's adore His name. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. We magnify your name. We exalt your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we worship and adore your name. We worship and magnify your name for all that you have done for us, for all that you are doing and for all that you are about to do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this morning, Father, have your way. This morning, Father, give us our trust. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is not because of ourselves that we are here. But it is because of you. It is our prayer this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. That Father you be magnified. That Father you be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for an encounter. We pray for a visitation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Touch our minds. Touch our hearts. With your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the challenges in our life, in our hearts. We pray in the name of Jesus. That Father, by your power, by your word. Let those challenges, oh God, be subdued. Let those challenges, oh God, be overcome. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's our prayer that, oh God, as your word is coming. That your word will fall on fruitful ground. Your word will fall on fertile ground in the name of Jesus. That your word will bear fruit and much fruit, abundance of fruit in our lives, in the church, in this nation, in the name of Jesus Christ. That, oh Lord, that we will be magnified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let every power of darkness be subdued. Let every forces of darkness be overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. We blind the eyes of the witches. We blind the eyes of the wizard. We blind the eyes of the powers of darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, your word says that whatever we bound shall be bound. Whatever we lose shall be loose. Father, this morning we bind and unloose. We bind whatever the evil one has bound. And we loose in the name of Jesus Christ. We lose what they bound. And we bind what they've lost in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise and we magnify your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Powers of darkness in this area. This morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We cripple you in the name of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus Christ cripple you. May the blood of Jesus Christ destroy your powers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And let the word of God have free course. Let the word of God have free course in our lives. In our hearts. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise, we glorify your name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Yamutufu, Oshayen Soda, what have I can see? No boy, Oba, Oba, Tampa, Oka. What have I can see? No boy, yeah, oh, bah. Oh, bah, tampa. Oh, can I find my And any day, oh, bah, tampa. Okay, I found my enemy and any day. Ain't he born me, born me, a radius with me? Say, say, boy, Hallelujah. 
Father, we need your help in our lives. We need your help in our families. We need your help in our homes. We need your help, oh God, in our workplaces. We need your help in our bodies. In that sickness, Father, we need your help for healing. In that problem, we need your help for deliverance. We need your help for a breakthrough. We need your help for a miracle. We need your help, oh God, make a way where there seems to be no way. As we are before you this morning, Father, you are our helper. Any help that needs to come in our life today, any help that needs to come in our families, in our home, in this church, in this nation today, Father, it is our prayer that as you are the merciful and the faithful God, Father, oh God, let that help fall on us. Let that help release into our hands. Let that help release into our, our hands in the name of Jesus Christ. And make our life, oh God, better in this month of July. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Oh, give a clap of praise once again to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We are blessed and we are favored to be here this morning. We are not here because we are perfect. We are not before you before we are because we are perfect. But it is just because of the grace of God. We've been qualified by the grace of God. We are trusting God that God will use us as vessels. Of Anna this morning. Amen. And thank our senior pastor, Reverend Ejanashi. He's not here. For the opportunity to share the word of God with us all this morning. This morning we are looking at good steward. And we pick our scripture from First Corinthians four, verse one to two. Let's read together. Let me a man sow good seed on the good of Christ, the steward of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Amen. Amen. So Paul describes himself and even Apollos and by extension even affects us all as, as people of God and as leaders of, of the people. That we are stewards of the mysteries of God. We are caretakers of the mysteries of God. When people build the house and the house is not complete, sometimes when we see people moving to the house, they will call them Hesomano. They intrude. So in the kingdom of God, we are all practicing Shesumano. Because the, the, the owner is God himself. And as with time, the owner of the house comes to occupy the house. So also with time, God himself will come. So we are just caretakers. So we are servants and we are managers of God. So that is the description that Paul gave, even for himself, even the leaders, even for Apollos. And in the verse 2, he said that it is required of stewards, of the, these caretakers, of these managers, 
to be faithful. Because it doesn't belong to you. The work is not for you. The owner himself will come one day. So all the things that we do, we, we, we do on behalf of God. Because God is spirit and for you to operate on this earth, you need a body, the human body to operate. So we are here in, in bodily form and the spirit of God operates through us to push or to promote the agenda of God. That is why even evil spirit, demons, they, they need body, human bodies to, to operate and work against us. So that is why the devil always fight against us, against people, so that we will not come to the knowledge of God because God needs this, our body to work. The devil also wants to use this body to work. So if by the grace of God we are on the side of God, he said we are stewards of the mysteries of God. The mysteries of God is the good news, is the message of, of is the secret of God. So as stewards, as servants, as children, as disciples, as followers of God, we reveal the mind of God, the secret of God to the world. And in this charge, God expects us to be good stewards or to be faithful stewards. Because the agenda it is not about us, or the vision is not about us, but the vision is with God. Because even with my little study or courses in the business law, in company law, we have a relationship or we have a race between an agent and a principal. And so, in this relationship, God is the principal. And we are the agents. So, that creates a relationship they call agency relationship. And in that agency relationship, the agent works on behalf of the principal. The agent serves the interest of the principal. The agent promote the agenda and the well-being of the principal. So there is a term they call that fiduciary. Some people say uh, fiduciary relationship. So in this relationship, it's like the agent is under obligation. To seek the interest of the principal. So you don't take decisions by your own. You don't act on your interest, but you take decisions on behalf. You seek the total welfare of the principal. So, you put yourself in a situation that see if you are the principal, that this decision will it benefit the principal. So when God, when God talks about that stewards must be faithful, 
It is in this connection, this relation, that we are supposed to be faithful to the God who has called us. Amen. And she saw smartphone call, can say, as a sequono, and was so many and no quafoa. Let us say, yeah, 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 or, or people who are called by God or who are appointed by God to act or to do something in the interest of God. It doesn't mean that stewards are to be overvalued. Because the, the master himself is there. So, it doesn't also mean that stewards are supposed to be undervalued. Because the honor that belongs to the master, that honor has been conferred on the steward. So, the kind of respect and, and reverence that you give to the the, the principal of God, we must also give reverence, honor, and respect to the people who are acting on behalf of God. Especially when they are good stewards or when they are faithful stewards. Because they are representatives of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is required of stewards to be faithful. Because God has entrusted this mystery, this possession, this valuable possession to the stewards. And this message are handled by the stewards. To promote the kingdom agenda. Amen. Amen. So a faithful or good steward is ready to do whatever the master calls him or her to do. Because it is not about us, but it is about the master's business. A faithful steward is obedient to the master at all times. Because you are serving the master's interest. So, for, for instance, you are in the singing ministry. And sometimes certain songs may be chosen by even the leader for you to sing. Personally, you are not okay, or you don't really, act, you don't really like that song. But you are not singing the song to yourself or for yourself. But you are doing the master's business, and it's for his interest. But maybe God has a purpose to achieve. Or an agenda to accomplish through that music. So you handle it as if it is God who is handling it. So realize that when we want to be faithful stewards or good stewards, sometimes we need to move from our comfort zone. Certain things will not make sense to us. When God called Moses that he was sending him to Egypt to deliver the people of Israel, Moses looked at himself and said, I'm not qualified. Moses said, I'm not qualified. I, I can't even speak. I don't know how to speak. But God told him that who created this mouth? 
Tony said, I will be with you. I will be with that mouth. So Moses was uncomfortable. So God, I believe God said, okay, this is what I will do. Okay, then I, I will make arrangements that Aaron will go with you. Then Aaron can speak well, so Aaron will be with you. Are you okay with that? Moses said, yes, I'm okay. Because the agenda is not the agenda of Moses, it's the agenda of God. So sometimes God calls us, God assigns certain tasks to us. We look at ourselves, hey, how can this be? I am not qualified. Look at my educational level. Look at the congregation. Hey, people are having PhDs, doctor degrees. They are having this. Hey, me, for me to stand these people to share the word of God, to sing, to, 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 to even preach, I'm not qualified. But God is telling somebody today that it is not about you, but it is about his business Amen. and it's about his agenda. Amen. 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 Because even in the earthly world, even when we look at even the law on employment, when you employ somebody, it is the duty or the responsibility of the person to avail himself for the work that which you have assigned him to do. And it is the employer's responsibility to provide all the resources, the equipment, everything that the employee will need to be able to succeed or to be able to execute that work that which you have assigned him or her to do. So when God calls us or when God assigns certain tasks and responsibilities to us, it is our duty or responsibility just to avail ourselves. Then it is the work or the agenda of God. It is God who will provide you with all the skill, with all the gifts, with all the things that you need to succeed. So all that God needs is that God, I am ready, I will do whatever you want me to do. Father, I will go wherever you want me to go. Just speak to me. I will do as you say. All the other things, all the things that we worry about, I'm not calling, I'm not this, I'm not this. God says he will handle it. Amen. God requires just our faithfulness. God is speaking to us this morning that God wants our faithfulness in every area that God or every assignment that God has given to us. Just avail yourself. Just be faithful and God will do wonders to you. A faithful or good steward knows and understands that the kingdom business is not about him or her or his agenda, as we have said, but it's about the agenda of the master. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So remember in the Bible, there was a man called John, John the Baptist. And this John the Baptist was a forerunner, or he came before Jesus Christ. Even he was even conceived in his mother's womb, Elizabeth, before Mary conceived Jesus. So he came, even said that he came to prepare the way even for Jesus. 
Now, no idea in a loom can say, Oh, no, no, all pages to cry. Yes, to Christ to break fast on you. So, at a point in John chapter 3, and see, I hear you, honey, a senior and son, from verse 25. Yeah, can time free at your new loom honor. Said that a distraction came up. Say, and come, dear be a bear. Then arose a certain question between some John's disciples and the and the Jews about purifying or purification. And say So you see, John baptized Jesus. But at the point, Jesus was also preaching and baptizing, and the people left John and they were following Jesus. So let's continue. So the disciples of John came to John. And they came unto John and said, Unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same man baptized, and all men are come to him. And if you that time you will train somebody and the person can even do one less than you 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 will do it. But when you understand stewardship, you will not be envious or jealous of the person. Let's continue. So John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it has been given to him from heaven. So John knew that all that he has was given to him from above. So a good steward understands that the power that he or she operates with, it is not from himself, but it is from above. It is Amen. God who has given him or blessed him with that power to operate. Amen. He said, a man can receive nothing. Not even something or nothing. Except it's has been given to him from above. So John acknowledged the, 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 the source of his power. John understood stewardship. Because a faithful steward understands the ministry of stewardship. John 27. So John answered. Then verse 28 says, Ye yourself bear witness that I said, I said that I am not the Messiah. So he said, ah, you remember, I told you people that I am not the Messiah, but that I am sent before him. So a good and a faithful steward here understands his ministry. You know your ministry. You know what God has called you to do. So you are not bothered by the ministry of others. You are not worried about how God is using others and how God is not using you. Because maybe you are teaching and preaching. Others are selling all sorts of things. So you are not moved by the selling business. So you know your ministry and you stay in your ministry. So John the Baptist knew his ministry, knew the agenda. So he said, Man, I know what I've been called to do. So I need to stay in it. I need to operate because it is not about me, but it is about God. Amen. So don't worry, me, you, you are worried about people going to Jesus. You are worried about, so when you even start a ministry, 
and the number is not growing as it wants it to grow, you will not be worried because you know that maybe God has called you to minister to, let's say, five people, ten people, fifty people. Why is it that I began ministry with this person? I began life with this person. I started school with this person. This man is flourishing. I began business with this person. Maybe the, maybe that person is selling rice and oil. You are also selling uh, say biscuits and drinks and whatever. So you are not worried about yours is that what you have been, been you are convinced to sell. You stay in your life. You see what is happening? We, one thing I realize is that especially in this country, what happens is that when people are into business, they sell things, they hear that, oh now now uh, I can see that, I hear that the pure water business is very good. So then everybody wants to go into the pure water business. restaurant. Now people are selling cars, so I need to also sell cars. Now it is about it is about cosmetology, it is about um, massage and all those. So I need to go into that and open a spa. I remember that someone asked me that, ah, why is it that he said Muslims, when they even want to go to business, they go to their, their, their imams or malams, they consult that what should I sell? That we Christians, who, who, what should we also do? I said, ah, but you don't know, you have Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit, and you are here confused. See, we, we, we follow the crowd. But that business that we entered into, did we talk to God that God, what business should I do? What should I do? Even the even the course that we we, you are, we we are even sometimes we hear oh now when you do accounting you can you can do a ticket account then you can do this then you will get more money you become so so and so oh you go into this thing but have you asked God have you talked to God that God can I go into accounting can I go into marketing can I go into this area? And I say, he doesn't want to sit in an office. What he wants is that he wants to go to the marketplace. I say, hey, let me go there. Then, then. <laughs> and I say, me, that's, that's not my area. Of what. <laughs> so you need, to, you, you need to know who you are. You need to know where God has called you. Then be in that area for that ministry. Amen. Amen. This that you think you are doing so things, your boss will call you and will talk certain ways that you even regret accepting that job. What am I doing here? Somebody ask yourself, what are you doing there? What are you doing there? I remember my elder sister at a point. See, growing up, we realized that her area is about this uh, fashion and this uh, sewing and this hairstyle. Then at a point, at that point, I was in the university, I think level 100. 
Then she also she said she wants to go into the um, this course, a secretarial course. No, she, was, she was older than me. She will learn this in stop. She will go there, stop, stop, stop. So she was this, this secretary, so one day I was there at the school. Then she came to me. She said, Sister, where is you? I'm struggling. I told her, but you know, you know that that's not your area. So at the point she stopped, she said, she can't, she can't continue. Okay, give it short hand, she's struggling with it. And she do maybe no nah short hand and short hand. Now on to me and she said So she said she wants to go to fashion school. So okay, so my siblings, somebody said, okay, then they helped her. So she went to the school. My, my other brother told her that I won't give you anything until I see that the day that you are graduating, I'll bring it my gift to you. So the day she was starting the graduation, my brother bought this sewing machine, then he gave it to her. Uh-huh. And so she said, I'm going to go to the school. And my mother said, oh, I've long lives. I thank God. I feel your mama may say, say say the nyamia drum, me the nyamia sma kuma chomi yebi. You see, so when you are in an area that it is God who operates, or in an area of interest, you operate freely, and you are happy to operate, and you are supposed to be faithful. And she say, who 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 be the nyamia di wediya? Na wu ye se juma na wu sa fe wu ye juma na wu wu hai wu. So it is because we don't consult God, we don't talk to God, we don't talk to the Holy Spirit. That's how come sometimes we struggle, we go through challenges and certain difficulties in our life. Then we tend to blame even the devil. Maybe in the house of God. Maybe you are not really good with singing. You said, I, I, I want to be a chorister. I want to sing. But even the key, you don't even know F, you don't know W, you don't know M, you don't know whatever. So, but you want to sing, and the voice is not even that good, but you want to sing for the Holy Spirit to descend. I'm sure even sometimes the, the, the Holy Spirit is even shocked and surprised by the voice. So the Holy Spirit will not even come around. <laughs> but you think, oh, let the power of the Lord come down. But God is looking at you. Oh, this voice cannot bring the power. But maybe your area, maybe you can flourish, you can function well in the ushering ministry. Identify that area, move there, work there, and Amen. serve faithfully. Amen. Ebi a wu di ane se ube ye osha na ube he se ni pa ba sorry a omu mu ha omu ube bo a me ni pe ni aju o nyami fi enti fi she ne hu be di a wasa u kone ko ye juma ne. But see sometimes we think of what people will say. There are times a brother came to me and said, I, I want to serve, I want to go to the children's service. But I, I want to go, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking, if I leave, if I leave the choir, what people say, I say, brother, are you thinking about what people will say? Think about what God has for you. Amen. Also, people are catching and say, Oh, yeah, yeah, for baby, you might want to fly anyone. And so, oh, free fine, you might. And then, and if I beckon, and no, besides, oh, shed the end, if I beckon, and I say, Oh, she shed the end, and I say, Oh, yeah, and I why. So, I say, Follow. The direction, the leading of God. And today, that brother is there, he's doing well there. So it is required of stewards to be faithful. So in the verse 30, John said that he must increase, but I must decrease. Because John knew his ministry and he knew that my ministry is not the same ministry with Jesus. It is his time and I need to give way to him for him to increase, but I must decrease. How many of us can say that that brother, that sister, 
must increase. Why I decrease? Amen. Or say you're having a catch and a sea for no say. Or no, you own him, the Juman, no, him, Tessa, I bring him. No, I was a yes to Christo, yet then a tea. Now I know you're handing it here or back him. Now, Yemu do do say, and a dear no be the Juma. Now, Yemus and Nipani, a good old Juma, come a fire swat. You've been here and you're near Cassa, as I'm so near to a good steward, a faithful steward must be humble. And see, Obia, oh, yeah, it's just a four panel. I was so to me, Drew, who I say. Because certain things in our uh, certain positions in our hands, we are we are lifted. Just that temporary position, and you think that you are above everybody. People talk people as as if they are their children. Because don't leave that his position or his ministry is transient. It is temporary that he will not be there forever. So that position that you occupy, you are you you. You will not be there forever. One day, you need to give way for somebody to come and take over. Amen. Are you ready? Are you willing yeah. to, to give way for somebody Amen. to also do that which God has called him to do? Na Yohani de no one himself, you man or yen a chemako. Now once you dear nyame de asha won sa a jum or dear mouse sa we yenu. Once you nin say maybe be ba nyame do be cook or be bad the si one nyen. Now why a crowd or send pan a ba ube j mama na na Yes, yes, I must give way for him. It is time. My time is get, coming to an end. Now it is his time. So he must increase. But I must decrease. Some go to various extent, go to places to protect their positions. Because human beings, we are temporary. So that position is temporary. So you can go to all the extent to protect it, but one day you will leave, you will go away. And you don't go by yourself, God himself will take you out. Go by yourself, God himself will take you out. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So a good steward understand the ministry. So he said, he said he must become greater and greater, but I must become less and less. So in marketing, there's something we call product life cycle. That when you introduce a, a, a product, at the, into the, at the point the product will, will, will get to the maturity stage, then at the point it will decline. Yes, yes. Yes, so that is why some, sometimes in, in business, when, when they realize that the product is declining, then they rebrand the product. They do some innovation, then reintroduce the product again. So that they can be in ministry. They can be in business again. Amen. Amen. So verse 31. He said, He that cometh from above is above all. And he that is of earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. And he that cometh from heaven is above all. And see, your honey can say, Be a free throw a bayern or so a crown scene will be an annual one as I see you there, or as I see near my pen or ye. So he knew his standing, he knew what God has called him to do. He said, I need to be at where God has called me to do. And see, no one named you, Tina, and you named your mere friend, said Omeye, and I know I tried and so obey any crap. Thirty two, he said, And what he's, he has seen and heard. That he testified, and no man received his testimony. So a good steward doesn't speak of himself. But it is God who leads us, who directs us. So that we can be of good service to God and the kingdom. So a good steward is humble. Understand the plan of God for his life and his ministry. And 
You know and understand your ministry. So you work in it. You work in your ministry. You know that the position is temporary. So one day, somebody will also come and take that place. So when it's time, you give way. You don't need that a time will come that we step aside. That position, a time will come, you step aside. So when you treat people badly, remember that one day you will leave that position. You will not be there forever. So you must serve the interests of God. You must act in the best interest of God. So that when you leave, God will say, my good and faithful servant. Men will say that this man was a faithful man. This man was a God-fearing man. Ask yourself, what will people say when you leave that job? What would they say when you leave that position? What would they say about you? Will people be happy when you leave? Or they will be sad and cry that, oh, he's living, oh, she's living. Let people rather cry and rather wish that you are there forever. Not that they will be happy, they will wish that, I wish he even lives, I wish one day this man even lives, this brother, this sister even leaves this position so that we'll be free. So let's be faithful, let's be good stewards in every place, every area, every assignment that God has called us to do. Whether in the singing, whether you are a pastor, whether you are an usher, whether you are a Sunday school teacher, whatever you are doing, and even in our places, let's work in the interest of God. That let men say that this man was a good man. Amen. This sister was a good sister. Amen. This brother was a good brother. We wish he would be with us forever. Jesus, at a point, the disciples wished that he would stay with them forever. But he said that I must go. But when I'm leaving, and when I leave, I will not leave you alone. As an orphan, I will bring you, I will get you a comforter who will be with you forever. And that is the Holy Spirit. He is with us even till now. And he will be with us forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I don't know and don't know the issues that we are going through, but as Jesus said that he will bring a comforter. This morning, may God comfort you. Amen. May God comfort you. Amen. Maybe you have been treated bad. You have been treated bad in, in, this, in your office, in the ministry, in the workplace. So you feel that, ah, why am I even here? But as Jesus left and brought a comforter, may God bring your comforter. Amen. May God bring your comforter your way to comfort you, even in that marriage, even in that business. May God bring a comforter who will comfort you in your ministry, in your life.